Hello, everyone. Welcome to another graduate math solved problem. Today, we have a real valued function on a compact interval that is non negative. However, we know that its integral is zero. Prove that the set of points where f is non zero, which makes it positive, then is a null set. And null sets are those sets you can cover by intervals whose length add up to arbitrarily small values. And you will see this in detail throughout the course of the proof. So let's give set a name A and let's proceed to the proof without further ado. I encourage as always that you pause and think about the problems or even attempt them on your own. And, uh, and, and then follow with, the, with my solutions, which are, of course, not unique. So the first observation is that we can write this set A as union over natural numbers of the following sets. So the set of those x's of course, all my x's will be from a, b. I don't repeat that. Those x's where x is bigger or equal to one over n. Okay, so the first one are those x's where f is bigger than one, then those x's where f is bigger than one half, and then bigger than one third, and so on. And you can easily see that ultimately, these this union will cover every x inside my set a and we know that null sets are unchanged under countable unions in other words it suffices to show each uh summoned, let's call them, is a null set. And there's nothing special about having one over n there. So I will actually show uh, that for every positive number you pick, the set a s, let's call it, of points where f of x is bigger than or equal to s is a null set. Of course, this is proving more than uh, proving each sum in these null. Okay, how then do you prove that this a s is a null set? Because, so for the first time, let's use the fact that f has integral equal to zero. So because this integral is zero, there is a partition of a b um, say by intervals by intervals i1, i2, and in, so finitely many, such that the upper Riemann sum is less than epsilon. Okay, so let's uh, fix the epsilon is arbitrary. So given epsilon positive, because this integral is zero, there is a partition of my interval um, such that the upper Riemann sum is less than epsilon. So what is the upper Riemann sum? It is, you take the biggest value possible for F in the case interval, and then you multiply it by the length of the interval K. So I will use the absolute values to denote the length of an interval um, over K. K going from one to, to, to N, so N intervals. So this is an upper Riemann sum, and we must be able to make it less than epsilon. 
uh, because integral is zero. Now um, I call this say eta for this particular partition. It's just the real number. My claim then, the, the key claim is the following. I am this time, so F is bounded because by definition, Riemann integrable requires that F is bounded from the beginning. So, so this one, this time I wanna put, I wanna put S here and I wanna put I K here. And here I put, I sum not over all K, but K such that the interval I K has something from the set A S. So that means this intersection is non-empty. So I'm looking at the summation S times length of those I Ks which contribute to covering a S. So if you have say I5 having no points from a S, I don't include it in this summation and I don't need to include it in this summation as you will see. So my claim is that this is at most eta. So in particular, it's less than epsilon. Uh, why is this the case? Well, if you are in a set I K, which has some points from a s, then the supremum up here for such intervals is at least s, because I know at least there is one point where f of y is at least equal to s. So it could be larger, but definitely will not be smaller. So this supremum is always bigger than s, and i k part is just i k part, and also I'm doing summation over fewer k's. So that's why this quantity is less than the quantity for eta, and that's the proof. So this is the claim and the proof we didn't write down, but um, I hope you are convinced. And as a result, um, the summation again over the same case, that means case where IK contributes to covering AS of the length of IK is less than epsilon divided by S. Okay, uh, but AS is covered by union of those IKs, again, where IK intersection with AS is non-empty, um, pretty much by, by very choice of IKs. Those, we picked everyone that contributed to covering AS. So all of the IKs covered the whole interval AB and we're done. Um, which means, so which means, what this means is that AS has a covering, so, by intervals whose length add up to less than epsilon s. So, which means that for every epsilon positive, there exist, exists a collection of intervals that cover a s set theoretically and the sum of their length is less than epsilon over s and s is fixed for now because we only want to show a s is a null set and epsilon is arbitrary so this by the very definition of null set says that a s is a null set. And we are done because our original set is countable union of certain ASs. 
particularly uh, when s equals one over n. So I hope you enjoyed this proof. And um, if you have any questions, put them in the comment. Please subscribe and uh, support us this way. Also follow us on social media, Twitter and Instagram for now. Hope to see you soon in another video and uh, looking forward to putting out more videos soon.